Uh, this is question three now from the June uh, 2011 BY1 uh, paper. Uh, this uh, question is about um, membrane uh, structure and uh, membrane transport as well. Okay, uh, so let's uh, let's uh, start going through this question then. Uh, the diagram below is of a model of a section through a cell surface membrane as proposed by Singer and Nicholson. Okay, you need to remember those two scientists. All right, uh, you know they they come up quite a bit on uh, membrane questions. Um, so there's your diagram. Uh, the examiner has used uh, again simple shapes to represent. Uh, uh, different proteins and uh, the phospholipids uh, as well in the membrane. Okay, so that diagram should look uh, familiar to you. You should be able to identify various parts. So uh, before we go any further, I'll, ju I'll just highlight some parts here. Okay, that's obviously a transmembrane protein. It's a channel protein. Okay, it's also classed as an intrinsic protein, of course, because it's it's within uh, the bilayer uh, of the membrane. Okay, this protein here is also an intrinsic protein. Uh, it doesn't cross the whole of the bilayer, but it's certainly inserted within one uh, component of the bilayer, the top level there. Um, this this protein here is an extrinsic protein, as this one is down here on the the other side of the membrane. Uh, so they sit on the surface of the membrane. Uh, that's why they are extrinsic. Um, protein C then um, is another type of intrinsic protein. Um, it's still a transmembrane protein because uh, it's crossing right through the membrane. Uh, but this one doesn't have a channel in it, uh, so it's actually a, a carrier uh, protein. Um, okay, so A there, you know, that would be the uh, phospholipid bilayer. Okay, and uh, all these uh, squiggly lines would represent the fatty acid tails and uh, of the phospholipid. Okay, so that's just a little... Uh, summary of what the various components uh, mean. Uh, so if we scroll down to the uh, first question then, state the name given to this model and give reasons why it is so called. Okay, well uh, it's the fluid mosaic model of course, that's something you need to remember. And it's called that because uh, it's the proteins within the membrane uh, that form this mosaic or pattern like uh, appearance. Uh, really uh, the best view of the cell membrane would be to view it from above and you can really see the different patterns and shapes created by the different proteins uh, embedded uh, in the uh, bilayer. Um, so that's why it's called a, a mosaic. Uh, it's because of the patterns created by the proteins. Uh, it's called a fluid because the, uh, the actual phospholipids um, within the membrane are constantly moving. All right, they are not stationary at all. Uh, so it actually uh, resembles a fluid uh, in that regard. Okay, so there's my answer. Um, okay, just that uh, it's the fluid mosaic model. Uh, that's the, the, the name given to the model. And uh, the reason why is the proteins form a mosaic pattern and the phospholipids are constantly moving uh, like a fluid. Okay, right, uh, moving on to part two then. Name the structures labelled A, B and C uh, in the diagram. So uh, I've already mentioned those, but let's go back up to the diagram then. Uh, a would be the phospholipid bilayer. All right, it has to be bilayer because uh, there's actually two layers. There's a layer there and then there's a layer there. All right, so that's the phospholipid bilayer. Uh, B is an extrinsic uh, protein, okay, and uh, C would be um, either an intrinsic protein, you could have said, or actually carrier protein or transmembrane protein uh, will be acceptable for that. So a number of options for uh, protein uh, C there. Okay, so let's type those answers in. 
there you go so a phospholipid b uh, extrinsic protein and c i've decided to go for intrinsic protein uh, part three then describe the function of the channel shown in the diagram uh, well the channel is there uh, to actually allow the passage of polar uh, molecules or charged molecules or molecules that are hydrophilic uh, water loving uh, molecules okay so they actually uh, carry out a uh, facilitated uh, diffusion uh, of those molecules okay okay so there's the answer uh, written in there for you to allow the passage of polar molecules by facilitated diffusion right so there's um, uh, two more parts to this question uh, part B then some molecules are transported across the membrane by active transport explain what is meant by the term active transport okay so it's worth two marks um, again not not uh, a particularly difficult question um, it's the it's the movement of a substance uh, against the concentration gradient uh, which means the molecule is moved from a low concentration to a higher concentration that's what it means by against uh, the concentration gradient now because you're moving things against this concentration gradient uh, you actually need uh, an input of energy in the form of ATP uh, so that's what it means um, uh, active transport okay there you go so that's uh, that's my uh, answer there uh, worth two marks transport of substance against the concentration gradient for one mark and the second mark which requires an input of energy in the form of ATP okay um short and sweet that one let's move on to part c suggest two reasons why transport across the membrane is vital uh, to the cell okay quite a number of things you can actually put in here all right uh, the key thing to remember is that cells require substances to enter them uh, in order for them uh, to survive okay so for example uh, a cell will need oxygen entering uh, entering it um, to allow aerobic respiration to occur um, the cell will need to obtain glucose again um, to uh, act as a, a form of energy in respiration uh, you can convert glucose into ATP via uh, respiration um, so uh, other nutrients may be required by the cell okay it may need um, amino acids okay to make a protein all right so it's essential to get things into the cell because the cell needs them to actually uh, carry out various reactions okay um, secondly of course is that um, things must be able to leave the cell as well all right so things like uh, uh, waste products um, for example carbon dioxide um, is a waste product from aerobic respiration that needs to to leave the cell um, and uh, removed via the blood all right uh, other sort of waste products can actually uh, be removed from cells as well such as uh, lactic acid you, you get lactic acid when you uh, uh, respire anaerobically that's uh, without oxygen and, and, and it creates cramp so um, the removal of, of lactic acid um, could be put uh, there um, so uh, you know speaking to students about this question uh, some of them found it, it difficult uh, they couldn't quite pin down exactly what uh, the examiner wants but that's pretty much all all there is to it okay the cell needs uh, molecules substances to carry out its its various processes so that's why substances leave the processes of the cell create waste products and then they have to uh, be removed from the cell so that's why it's vital that transport occurs uh, across the cell membrane there you go so I've just mentioned one uh, one substance that is uh, needed by the cell so uh, uh, is is taken in by the cell which I've uh, stated as uh, glucose and the other one then is to remove carbon dioxide which is an example of a of a waste product uh, one tip for you is in this type of question you must state uh, specific examples of substances that leave and enter the cell 
um, general statements like it uh, uh, to obtain nutrients really wouldn't get you the mark. You would have to have stated a molecule that's needed, uh, as I've done here, which uh, which I've said is glucose. Okay, um, so um, that's uh, that's the end of uh, question three. Uh, if we have a quick look at uh, the uh, mark scheme, then there it is: a fluid mosaic model. Um, talking about the patterns created uh, by the proteins and the lipids, phospholipids are fluid. Okay, uh, part two then I think is straightforward. Uh, part three is fine about the channel protein. Um, what's it meant by active transport? Shouldn't be any problem with that. And then lastly, part C about um, the importance of uh, membrane transport to cells. Okay, so there's uh, there's the uh, examiner's marking points for part C. Okay, so uh, that's uh, that's question three done.